with March of the Machine and its aftermath finally closing the door on the Phyrexian saga of Magic the Gathering, we see another major villain and plot driver of the story be resolved. Lore thrives on compelling threats, a big bad that challenges both the heroes and ourselves as we read through their struggles. Now with most of the massive threats dealt with, what's next for the story of Magic the Gathering? What will happen in Aftermath that could shape the future of MTG lore? Hey everyone and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Sai, I've been bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Today's video will be big on speculation, which I know you guys just love. I'll try to keep it as evidence-based as possible, keep my own hopes and dreams for the MTG story out of it as much as I can, but stepping back, what's all this about? It's all about where the magic story goes following the end of the new Phyrexia arc. With this chapter in MTG lore coming to an end, it marks a turning point for the game. We've seen some of the biggest bads finished off in modern stories, the Eldrazi Titans, Nicol Bolas, and now New Phyrexia. And many players are asking, what's next? In today's video, we'll discuss speculation on the aftermath of March of the Machine, how it could impact the future story, and ultimately the legacy of New Phyrexia itself. Before we get into the speculation though, I want to take a moment to discuss something that I think you guys will really enjoy. A new project for lovers of both Magic the Gathering artwork and premium TCG accessories. For today's video, I'm partnering with OAM.com to spread the word about a new Playmat collection they're funding through Kickstarter. One of my absolute favorite Magic the Gathering artists ever, Johannes Voss is bringing us more beautiful playmats with this 2023 collection, available only to those who support this project through Kickstarter. If you don't know the artist, then I'm sure you know one of the cards he's done for MTG. Voss has illustrated 158 cards for the game starting way back in Scars of Mirrodin. His distinct art style can be seen on some of my personal favorites like Blood Artist, Shield Red the Whispering One, Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, and Zika, God of the Tree, whose colors are just gorgeous. As a Kickstarter backer, you can get exclusive playmats only being offered through this collection. Look at these amazing, vibrant designs! My personal favorite of these being the Plains art from Dominary United. There's also reprints of his other works available that were greenlit during Voss's Kickstarter collection back in 2021. So yeah, you're gonna find something that you like here. All these playmats are officially licensed and come with the outstanding quality you expect from the OAM store, with their designs putting the artwork first, reducing the intrusiveness of the wizards and other logos. There are loads of great bundles available through this Kickstarter, and they even have a stretch goal for additional artwork by Johannes to be featured on playmats. So if you're interested, we gotta try to make that happen, guys. Everyone loves having more options, especially with a portfolio like this. So guys, you can find a link on your screen right now as well as in the description below to head over to this Kickstarter campaign. Support an amazing artist who brings magic to life and snag yourself an exclusive playmat at the same time. Head on over and check out Johannes Voss's 2023 collection and support if you can. With Elish Norn defeated and the Phyrexians tucked away out of time and space, it appears like the multiverse is finally starting to settle down a bit. Countless planes are still reeling from the invasions with some lost entirely, but with the phasing of New Phyrexia, those that managed to put up a defense against the invaders survived to see the enemy basically just go offline as their command center was removed from reality. So aside from these creepy Phyrexians locked in stasis dotted all over the planes, there doesn't seem to be much of a lasting impact at least at first glance. This was actually a point many of the Vorthos community thought was a bit of a letdown with the story, that after all of this buildup, all the death and destruction, the unprecedented method in which the new Phyrexians were invading, that everything just went back to normal after the plane was phased out. It felt as if there wasn't any real consequence aside from a few notable deaths. But that isn't necessarily the case. Magic story lead Roy Graham made a short YouTube video posted on Magic's official channel looking to quell some fires. Now regardless of what he says, I doubt Aftermath will provide us with what fans of the story are really looking for. I don't think there will be anything so massive that suddenly we'll feel like the mom story had a satisfying end and impact on the multiverse. That's probably not going to happen. But Roy did mention big changes to the multiverse and kept it very vague, which I think could mean that planeswalking itself may change forever. 
With the invasion tree breaching the blind eternity, it showed us that there's some pretty creative ways in which non-planeswalkers could travel to other worlds. Bolas broke ground with his planar bridge, but it was limited to non-organic material. Phyrexia has always been on the cutting edge of this technology, first with skyships and then with the invasion tree. Basically, it's becoming a lot easier to planeswalk. This could be awesome in terms of a permanent and major consequence from March of the Machine. And then maybe I'll finally feel a little bit better about all of that promotional material that showed various legendary creatures fighting alongside each other that we never got in the story. Yeah, they could start making up for that with this. And then finally, that sort of thing can start happening in future stories. Not only that, but this expands what could be declared a quote-unquote multiversal threat. Now, everyday villains locked to their home planes can instantly become villains that threaten countless worlds. It certainly opens up the story to new threats, just as threats may be, well, starting to be lacking. Besides wishful thinking, we do get information from the Aftermath packaging that indicates that some of our heroes are struggling in this new reality after March of the Machine. As with most lore leaks, this one comes from Amazon, as right on their page we get the headline, Join D-Spark Planeswalkers as they rebuild what remains of the multiverse. And of course we see a completely uncompleted Nyssa and Nahiri right on the cover. These are the most striking, especially Nahiri, who last we saw was totally corrupted and crushed by a collapsing Skyclave, with the included assumption that she had died. I just covered that story, so if you want to check it out, you can find out how presumably dead Nahiri was. You can find it linked on your screen now or in the description below. Needless to say, her being cured in Aftermath poses some problems. One being how. Nissa was cured at the end of March of the Machine because Karn sacrificed his spark and Malira, her life, to cure both her and Ajani. In that scene, Ajani's spark was totally cleansed, but Nissa's was fractured and crumbling. This leads me to believe that Karn and Nissa will no longer be planeswalkers, as per the product details for Aftermath. That all makes sense, but with those tools used up in Nissa's healing, how in the world does Nahiri come back? Malira, with her dying breath and final act, hoped that this sacrifice would allow others to one day find another means of curing the completed, hopefully restoring those corrupted who lay in stasis across the multiverse. Maybe someone else manages to replicate the results offered by Karn and Malira, and thus found new means by which to cure Nahiri. But again, how? I think no matter how hard you look, it all comes down to sparks. One way or another, sparks and planeswalkers will be lost. Any other method, like some weird is it gun that cures completion, would feel a bit like a cop-out and very, very unsatisfying. For March of the Machine to matter, to truly matter, this cure, whatever it is, must come with a cost. I think with this tagline for Aftermath and Nahiri's revival, we'll see a great purge of planeswalkers in the roster of Magic the Gathering. We'll see long-standing characters step aside from the spotlight of saving the multiverse in order to cure their friends, and at the same time, open the doors to new characters to shine as members of a new Gatewatch. In this scenario, I believe Nahiri could be cured by her one-time mentor and friend turned brutal rival, Soren Markov and seeing his pupil battered, body half metal laying there in stasis, the ancient vampire could feel some level of guilt, because of his teachings, because of his self-centered approach to protecting Innistrad, because of his callousness toward a friend, he set Nahiri down this path. Knowing his place resides on Innistrad as its lord, he may give up his spark at the chance of redeeming his mistakes that lost him Nahiri, while giving her the chance to do better with the spark she's now been given. I personally would mourn the loss of Soren as a planeswalker, but honestly, I love him most when he's on Innistrad fighting for his home. And in this speculative scenario, he can still very much do that. Still, I love this because it really resets Nahiri's character. She's been through a lot. Once a fun-loving, sort of naive student who worked to imprison the Eldrazi Titans, and then fight them off. Because of a miscommunication, Nahiri went from friend to foe, essentially becoming a new character, all from what looked like a misunderstanding. Now with new hope and new experiences, Nahiri can see the multiverse through new eyes, maybe even Soren's eyes, and ultimately forgive him. She has to live with everything she did as a Phyrexian, including attacking Zendikar, the world she loves so much. 
We started to see her redemption arc in March of the Machine when she attacked New Phyrexia and went all out after she was infected. Now she carries that with her as Soren Scion, maybe even joining the Gatewatch as its newest member. Two more Planeswalkers who were lost in the story of March of the Machine, presumably still completed, are Jace and Vraska. Jace is the most mysterious of the remaining completed Planeswalkers because we only saw him for like a sentence in the March of the Machine story. He just looks at Norn, knows what she wants mentally, which is never described to the readers, and leaves. That's it. So everyone's wondering, what is he doing? And I believe this could be a major follow-up in Aftermath. Jace as a character is all about planning and strategy. Even Liliana noted upon hearing that he was completed that Jace doesn't lose. He just doesn't. He has backups to his backups, contingencies for his contingencies. A mental mage which Elish Norn would put to great use. Maybe this is the role he played in March of the Machine, Unseen. Perhaps Jace was out there making contingencies for New Phyrexia to account for any number of failures. This could be a massive consequence if Jace's actions led to some safekeeping of Phyrexian oil, or maybe the establishment of a New Phyrexian command center, thus ensuring Phyrexia's will could continue on in the future. Now, that would be absolutely crazy, but more likely, I think Jace managed to play the role of a double agent perhaps protecting himself in the absolutely real chance that he is completed, which he eventually was. I wouldn't be surprised for a character like Jace to plan around something so inevitable. In the story written about Vraska, as the completed planeswalker leads an attack on her home of Ravnica, we found that the Gorgon struggled to follow the orders of Elish Norn despite her body driving her to perform terrible acts of brutality. All throughout, there is this nagging in her mind that this was wrong, that this wasn't her, something we didn't notice with any of the other completed planeswalkers. It was revealed that this was a result of a mental prison Jace had installed in Vraska's mind. It was a section of thought walled off and protected from manipulation. Apparently, it also saved at least this part of her mind from the corruption of glistening oil. Though at the end of that story, Vraska was seemingly killed by Ral Zarek as he defended Ravnica, her body couldn't be recovered. And you guys, you guys know what that means. She, of course, wasn't killed and will be coming back. In her perceived final moments, as she believed she was dying and embracing death, the memory of Jace residing in her protected mind palace brought her through a life they could have lived together. A sweet life, a loving life, an adventurous life. It was a touching end. But what if this was more than just a memory? What if this was really Jace, projecting himself into Vraska's thoughts? And when he felt her life slipping away, he managed to secure her before her death, whisking Vraska to safety. But how could he do this? He was completed too, so why would a completed Jace help another who had fallen in battle? Phyrexians aren't known for their compassion or camaraderie. Well, it's because Jace too had this secured section of his mind. Jace and Vraska both share this special trait, one that Jace set up before their big conflict against Nicol Bolas to protect them from the dragon's powerful mind magic. It had again saved them from total completion. So while Jace looked like he was going off on some secret mission for Elish Norn, maybe he was more being guided by his tucked away thoughts, bringing him to his love, saving Vraska and getting off of Ravnica before they could be found. But now that New Phyrexia is gone and most of the completed out there are in stasis, will there be a happy ending for this couple? I can see two different ways this part of the story could go. Maybe with the commands of New Phyrexia going offline, the protected parts of their minds regain full control. So we'll have a half-metal Jason Vraska return to normal, aside from the physical elements of Phyrexia, of course. This would present to us our first true good guy Phyrexians. Those completed in body, but not mine. Think like really heroic versions of Urabrask, who never got to wear his hero status in the story. Or we could continue with this desparked Planeswalker tagline from the Aftermath's promo material on Amazon. As Vraska and Jace are found, embraced in stasis, their friends decide to sacrifice their sparks to bring them back. If they're still conscious because of their mental prisons, maybe Jace and Vraska just trade each other's sparks to cleanse one another. Maybe we're settling on Ixalan where they first fell in love, or staying on as Guildmasters of Ravnica. Either way, they could both be desparked and live happily ever after on the world of their choice. But if others must sacrifice their sparks to bring them back, who would do it? 
I think Chandra Nalar would be a great candidate to heal Jace. They are close friends, founding members of the Gatewatch together who have helped each other throughout countless trials. With Nissa now likely desparked and her and Chandra finally getting the relationship we all wanted to see, maybe Chandra wants to settle down with Nissa on her home of Keladash, a world they both really loved. Thus, she gives up her spark to Jace to live her life locked on a single plane with Nissa. The tougher question is, who would cure Vraska? Aside from Jace himself, I actually can't think of anyone who would be willing to give up their spark for her. The closest other planeswalker I can think of would be Ral Zarek, but they were more like rivals than anything else, so I doubt he'd be willing to sack his spark. So honestly, if Jace Spark survives the cleansing process from Chandra, he would likely give up his own Spark to cleanse Vraska. Thus, we lose a few more Planeswalkers, while also keeping some characters we love. While we lose some Planeswalkers, or just their Sparks really, we will start to uncover new characters journeying through the multiverse with the first of this new crop being hinted at in March of the Machine. The Loxodon lore mage of Strixhaven, Quintorius, or better known as Quint, was last seen being a conduit of untold amount of mana as he burst into a bright light and disappeared. His peers believed he died, but Liliana Vess, after hearing this, thought he could have planeswalked after his latent spark ignited with this surge of magic. Another card we got for Quint wasn't a Planeswalker card, but it's clear that they're setting him up to be a new Planeswalker, which we'll see in Aftermath. Even after Quint, maybe with some other Planeswalkers losing their spark, or with new means to travel the multiverse opening up, I think we'll see an expansion of characters that will drive the story forward in Magic the Gathering. The true legacy, the big consequence from March of the Machine, isn't the direct impact of the war itself. Sure, there'll be Phyrexians in stasis, war machines unoperational, relics of the war dotting the planes who were victims of their invasion, but that is just the superficial consequence. The true stamp New Phyrexia will leave on the multiverse is the overall direction in which the story of Magic the Gathering will take. Finally, we'll break free of the Gatewatch dominating the story. Finally, we can start looking towards non-planeswalkers to again be the focus of the plot. Finally, we can maybe return to stories that focus on a plane, as well as its native inhabitants, rather than their saviors who come from another world. For so long, planeswalkers were marked as being special, not because of their power as mages, but because they can travel the multiverse. If that is made to be not special, either by making less of them or making it so everyone can essentially planeswalk, you return to a story not totally driven by this restrictive cast. You return to stories focused on local populations and their leaders. For so long, the story had been led by planeswalkers, and my speculation is that Aftermath will slightly start to change that direction. To what degree is still to be seen, but that's what I'm predicting from this next set. Anyway guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I wanna know your predictions and speculations for Aftermath in the comment section below. Please share your thoughts and I'll respond with my own. If you enjoyed the video, consider supporting the channel by leaving a like, becoming a subscriber or member, dropping a super thanks, and sharing it with your friends. It all goes a long way in helping us build this community. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, see ya!